Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the post game review show. Sean, how do the games feel? Oh man, the the Vite Wolf. I just got done with the twenty and zero game, which doesn't happen a lot. And when okay. it does, I'll take it. So that game felt really good. I yeah. couldn't tell if my opponent just deliberately attack, like you know, attacked into me uh, the second time. But I managed to kill him three times very early in lane, which I mean that felt great. The yeah. the Lena game when I was against a Viper. I, th I definitely think my build sucked, and I was relatively clueless as to what to be doing in the early game, okay. for sure. Yeah, uh, I was actually so happy that you played against a Viper, because it's a hero you actually really understand, so I feel like it'll be easier to, to point out the things you did wrong, um, and yeah, hopefully we can improve that. Uh, game one, you also played Viper. Uh, how did you feel about that game? You know, I'm Was actually... Too long ago? Yeah, I mean, I... I tunnel visioned a little bit. Um, that was the game. Uh, you built Helm of the Dominator that game for the first yeah, time. Yeah, the, the Helm right? of the Dominator feels yeah. worlds better. Like, yeah. I mean, I get stats immediately, and then I get, like, a scout to just poach ahead. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, so great, and I always get the catapult, because that's the dopest. Who was that's I up right. against? You were against the Lone like, Druid. That was, that was what I looked oh, at a lot. Oh, that's right. I had zero sense what to do about that bear. I clicked yeah. on the bear... And the first thing I saw was that the bear had 1,800 hit points. And I was like, we cannot defeat the bear. And <laughs> yeah. had a quelling blade and a stout shield. And then there was a lone druid that had, like, a little bit of regen. And I was like, I don't – he he has two characters. He's yeah. not supposed to get two characters. So that was – that that hurt my brain a little bit to process. Yeah, it, it seems a little OP sometimes, that's for sure. Um, what I want to look at is – let's hop into game one. Maybe we should go backwards. Hmm. What's more? No, let's let, let's let's mind? do game once. I, okay. I, like I wanna I wanna watch this shit. Okay. Uh, looks like yeah, my screen region's good enough. You can pretty much see everything. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, game one. Um, so you did click on the hero when you played him. Is that correct? You knew the items because you basically said the items that he had. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I because I clicked on him and I was like, oh, we punish him by right clicking lots upon him. Yeah. But like I, I, I could not figure out what to do about the bear. Literally, the bear melted my mind. Okay, so let's look at the, the base stats a little bit. I took these clips in demo mode. So this is uh, what he had starting, I believe. Yeah. Um, it was uh, yeah. two iron branches, I believe, with a tango. And then his bear had quelling and stout, like you said. Um, the If you want to look at the base hero, so for example, Lone Druid, 580 HP, level 1. He does 50 damage. He's got 3 armor. He's really fast base for 325. And the bear itself is just utterly tanky. 1400 HP, stout shield. Movement speed's pretty good. Armor's okay. This is impactful, though. The damage is low. And another thing that you don't know, probably, is that the Spirit Bear does a different type of damage than Lone Druid. So he actually does, I think, only 75% oh. of this value to heroes. So technically, he's only hitting for a little bit under 30 damage. So even though there are two, oh. assuming they have the same attack speed, it's kind of like he's hitting for 75 damage a hit instead of 50 at level 1. Okay, okay. So the Bear is less scary... Mm -hmm than you thought he was for sure and he definitely has a lot of hp but the thing about stout shield to keep in mind is that only damage blocks from the top of your damage so um as as the game continues and your damage gets higher and higher it does less and less damage so yeah, yeah. you probably you basically had no idea how to deal with this guy right yeah so i i did note that the guy had uh 580 hit points so i was just trying to infrequently poke him down yeah that's pretty fair um, I felt like you did a okay job with that. Um, you did see that the the you couldn't that you didn't get aggro just attacking the bear, which was good. But there's a lot of opportunities here where you could have been attacking, in some cases, um, mm -hmm. just the bear by itself. Like if if you're not getting a deny or a last hit, just just throw, slap the bear, slap the bear because it will add up. And if I attack the bear, it doesn't aggro on the creeps, right? I believe so because it doesn't count as a hero. It's a it's a okay. slightly weird one. Uh, most it's maybe better than a typical creep, but. I think when I first got into the game, I my presumption was that it did. So okay. I was trying to be very careful. I think almost every time I clicked on the bear, I did a you poison. You did it right there, I think. I'm, I th I'm pretty sure. Let me let me check the exact slider here. Right. So it came up here, and I believe you right clicked the look. Look at that. You just right clicked the bear, and you didn't. I use my Q on it. No, that was a regular attack. Oh well. I believe I believed to have right clicked upon the bear with my Q. Okay. Well, so basically, <laughs> at some you can point I figured right out there. that it didn't happen. You were staying right here. You attacked the bear right here. It didn't aggro. Yeah. So slap the bear okay. more um, is definitely one aspect. Try to hit the main hero more, um, yeah. just because his his armor is low. His HP is obviously all lower. Um, do you know how fast you can resummon the bear? Any ideas on that? 
Um, at the end of the game, I clicked on him, uh, uh-huh. or in the game that I had a lone druid on my team. I saw that it was 120 seconds. Yeah, that's right. At so, level three. So if if you summon as soon as you spawn into the game, it's a little bit scary to trade with a bear because he can just resummon it basically once it stops taking player damage. Yeah. But at some point, once he resummons it, you have this like timer where you can kill the bear. And if you kill the bear, you get 300 gold, and it deals Ooh. like I believe uh, it's like. A percentage base damage to the lone druid himself it doesn't like kill him or anything but it does like a couple hundred points of damage tops so yeah. killing the bear is very very good um to demonstrate that i actually wanted to show um just uh w- like i was thinking about your viper skills pretty much like uh, which skills that you ended up getting um and uh, you pretty much follow the guide i feel like you go the exact same skill build every single game you play as viper would you agree with that Oh, yeah. Like, I I don't quite exactly follow the guide, Uh but more or less. Like, I generally go for two points in the queue, um, and then I get Neurotoxin and my my passive, and then I just blast Neurotoxin all the way up, then I do my passive all the way up, then I do my queue all the way up. Okay, so knowing what you know about um, Lone Druid now, which of your skills do you feel are better to actually kill him? Um... Better to actually kill him. Like, what, what, what is going to make you better against him in the lane? Because you, your your first skill is going to slow attack speed and movement speed. Um, yeah. And do poison damage. Your second skill is going to give you physical damage increase. Your third skill is going to resist magic damage and slow attack and movement speed. Like, which of those is more relevant? Because you have to think about, like, what are the strengths of their heroes versus uh, the um, what, what you have to actually deal with it. And I, I have to actually turn you off for just a second. I have to grab something on Skype. But continue talking. Woo! Yeah, I mean, so, truthfully, in my experience, I've always had the best outcomes when I have gotten Q to uh-huh. two points because they're slow enough. I and then my W reach. very, very high because I can For- finish them off with damage. So I feel like those would still be the most important against Lone Druid. I tried to get Corrosive Skin a few times off stream uh-huh. um, because... My understanding of it is that they get slow when they attack me, and I get That's a little true. bit of bonus magic resistance, and they get a, take a little bit of damage over time. So but, that, can, that can work, um, but obviously your first couple skill points are just so important in in terms yeah. of making sure that you do that you get as much as you possibly can out of your laning stage. And unfortunately, um, going for corrosive sometimes can be bad. You're back. Welcome back. So the clip yeah. that I wanted to play here. Um, it should just help you break this down a little bit easier. I wanna, like, Although wait. I do need to mute the audio. Oops. So sick. Yeah, okay. I mean, I feel like at most I would want one in, one in corrosive skin. So I would just get one in corrosive skin for the bonus move and attack speed slow, and then just still be doing the same build with two points in Q and maxing out the W. That's pretty true. Um, I I feel mm-hmm. like going for your second skill is maybe better early. I mean, one point in your poison attack I think is pretty justified, but. For example, against the bear, um, you know, as as it's lower in HP, you do more damage, right? So once the bear gets down to like below the halfway mark, you're getting all of this free damage, because it says max bonus damage is 96. Well, if you have two points and nether toxin early in the game, and the bear's missing half of his HP, that's like a free 50 damage every time you attack that bear. So it would give you the potential, if you wanted oh. to, by like level three, to have two points in this and just hit the shit out of that bear, and then you're basically hitting for double damage once it gets a little low. So I see. So so the way I was misthinking about it was um, I was thinking which of these skills compared against each other with me just assuming that I would get the two points in the queue right away. And why have I been assuming that? Well, because it's the easiest way to just pick off and kill most heroes. But again, specifically Lone Druid, favoring Nether Toxin early is great because I'm just going to be trying to hit the bear. It might be better. It depends on how the matchup is going, how pressured you feel. Do you need more slow? Like if you look at the DPS change, you're only getting 60% more damage by getting a second point in the Nether Toxin. It's doubling the slow. But really, you don't really care that much about slowing the bear. It's really about just killing him so that he can't pressure you. But right, so I might just option. go one and one and just look. Yeah, or just figure out, or, or maybe if he's trading you a lot, then you can get one point in your passive. That way, if he's right-clicking you a lot, you can lower his movement speed. Every time he right-clicks you, he takes 40 damage, which is pretty good magic-wise. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, Viper is, is definitely one hero whose skill build can be all over the place, depending on the circumstances. If Like, a lot of Vipers actually will go 114. This is maybe an older build, but it basically just means that they might misestimate whether they can kill you, and you just kill get a double kill because of it. Like, things like that are definitely something to consider for your skill build. So I think this was, out of all the matchups, this was the one where your skill build could have shifted a lot just because you're against a lone druid and because it's a yeah. little bit iffy 
to lane against him. So um, if we jump back into the clip a little bit here, um, as, as a whole, uh, oh yeah, did you notice one other advantage that you had this game? I have a feeling you didn't. Did you notice that you had Drow Aura this game? Uh, no, 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 absolutely You not. actually had what? a Drow on your team both of the Viper games you played. So you, at level one, you had a bonus six damage that you normally wouldn't have. And then as that continues a little bit, you become an even harder carry. That's, that's something that actually impacts the mid lane in a lot of ways. Um, I just want to leave this plane as a whole, but so we can look at some some small mistakes you've made. But yeah, um, I think there was certainly plenty of times where um, you could have attacked a little bit more. And because auto attacking is uh, one of the most important things. Oh, by the way, you see that little sword on the top of the bear? Yeah, it means you can't attack uh, because he's too far away from his main hero. So in times like this where he overextends, just slap the bear once his hero runs away oh, so because auto attacking is like by far the most important aspect of your damage in the early game you know any bit of time that you spend standing around instead of attacking could make a difference over the course of for example if he has tangos and you auto attack like 20 percent less than you should that might not be enough to overpower through his tango region and then get him to a dangerous state where your nether toxin does more so here's a question about just the right clicking so the at this point what we've discussed with laning and trading is that um, you know, pulling aggro on the creeps to try to, like, you know, push the equilibrium back in your direction, how dangerous it is and how much damage happens when, you know, you're getting right or you're getting targeted by creeps. So sort of have this in my head that you never want to be getting targeted by creeps. So would you say that sometimes it's actually just fine to just whack them, walk away from the creeps a little bit? Or should I still always be using my Q? Because Viper is obviously different from most heroes in that I can attack with impunity i mean you should pretty much always use your q if you're going to aggro <laughs> enemy creeps but if if there's like a moment like this for example your rubik is wrapping around if assuming you're by the creep wave it doesn't matter because you know you're going to kill him so if we think about the lich clips that we had before with the creep yeah, waves yeah. if you know that you that you're going to kill them within like three seconds because your teammates are about to pop out it doesn't matter if you tank creeps down to half hp so what you can start doing is use those circumstances to your advantage so, for example, and this is maybe something I should have showed before, but the, the important thing about the creep wave is that, um, you know, we talked about the trifecta of trading. If a creep is involved, the trade is not as favorable as it was. So what you want to do usually with disables is disable them when the creeps would hit them. Because then instead of just disabling and right-clicking, you're getting disable damage, right-click damage, and creep right-click damage, which gives you okay. like three advantages in the trading. So... For example, if you're if let's say your green creeps are gone here and the in the enemy creeps are running at you, you could hypothetically start trading with the lone druid. And if he's a good player, he's gonna be like, "Oh, Viper is getting wrecked right now." That's a full creep wave. But in reality, the Rubik's swinging behind to initiate. So it's basically just a bait based on in-game circumstances. You right. won't encounter that very much at your MMR because players are still inexperienced. But um, it's it's certainly very important. Um, you should have uh, committed here. His HP is low enough that, that this was a pretty clear kill. But either way, you guys did get the kill, which is good. Um, looks like he ran the bear back to... Yeah, it was that brief moment where I stepped left that was the mistake. Yeah. And, and the smallest movements like that make a big difference. So uh, how about yeah. your early itemization here? I felt like we talked a lot about like the first thousand gold you spent. I felt like you didn't prioritize it too much this game, or at least you kind of went pretty much the same items that you always go. Would you agree with that? Or do you feel like you were adjusting your early items um, or had a reason for buying them? Um, I think I, I cannot remember what my itemization was this game. You definitely went uh, Boots and Aquila. And then, yeah, you've got it all queued up with Treads. And then you've got a Wand afterwards. Yeah, I mean, there's some games where I go for the Wand first if I feel like I actually really want it or need it. And I think in this game I went for Treads first, I yeah, think. Yeah, I believe you did. And then you made the Wand. But in this game, is the wand even worth it against a lone druid? That's the thing. is that I, I, I didn't see him casting a lot of spells, and I didn't quite know how the bear worked, so I thought no. So his only spells is he summons the bear. That would that would give you a magic stick charge. He can <laughs> use rabid, which makes him and his bear run fast for like 30 seconds. So it's like once every 30 seconds he'll cast a spell. And his third skill is the roar one that makes you feared, that makes you run away. So that's his three. That's his like three spells. He could ulti, I guess, to transform to yeah. bear mode, but he won't do that. So basically the wand is only good for the stats. So if you buy, if you really want the wand stuff, I'd almost prefer you just buy the stat items, like get a circlet and some ironwood branches, and just not get the stick, because the stick is pretty kind of crap this game against most of their heroes, because they're very like low cast, um, tanky heroes basically. So the so the logic was fine that I wasn't seeing him cast a lot of spells, and he didn't seem to be very spellcastery. So in, 
So for me, I said, therefore, I will get the wand last because it's not that important. Well, the, the difference is that you could delay it and get another item faster. Yeah, so... It's 465, in, in, right? It's expensive. Would it be reasonable to just go straight for a headdress right here and just step straight into the Helm of Dominator? Yeah, absolutely. Like, compare, and that was actually a point I wanted to make, compare what Treads gives you to Helm of the Dominator. Can you, do you know off the top of your head? You know, I don't. Well, let me see. So, I think I know their stats individually, but I know that I get, it's like plus 45 attack speed with the Treads, plus 20, 9 strength. 20, 25. 25? Okay. So 25 then, attack speed, 9 stat of your desire. Um, Helm of the Dominator gives you plus 6 to all stats, so it gives you basically 6 of those 9, but it gives you 6 to every stat instead of just 9 of 1. Yeah. And it gives you uh, 8 HP per second, and it gives you 20 attack speed. So keep in mind, obviously, that Helm is, is huh. about twice the cost, but hypothetically in a game like this where you're owning, or even in game 3 like you were owning, you could just skip treads entirely, get an instant Helm of the Dominator. Really? And that's if you're know. if you're winning the lane. Because imagine like if you finish it at eight minutes, you'd have brown boots, aquila, headdress, or um, helmet dominator. You'd have tons of stats because you'd basically have a wraith band and plus six stats from the helm. You would attack about huh. as fast as what you did with your treads, and you'd have all of that life steal, and you could and you could take control of a creep. Like it completely changes your your strength in the lane if you can hit that timing. But if you if you need cheaper stat items to stay alive against some burst for example then buying treads is straight more straightforward because it's cheaper so sometimes you can adjust your build slightly based on how the lane is going if you can get something faster than normal so that's one of the reasons why people actually get treads early is that it's a fast way to get some basic stats that you'll need yeah absolutely and tread okay, switching so, helps you make your mana more efficient well, we'll talk about that later yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I only, I think, did one tread switch in my entire life, which was in that third game where I switched it off strength, drank a salve, and then just put it right back on strength again. Okay, um, that's that's about what you should do. This kill here that you finally went for, I think you could have done this a lot earlier. There was a lot of moments here where even the bear was about half HP. I mean, that could be, you, you, that could really let your two points in Nether Toxin do a lot of work, for example. Yeah, yeah, no, I was absolutely terrified at the start of this game. I and see. this was me over time. Getting hit by the bear, ganking him, realizing how weak he was, and starting to get a rough sense for it. But literally, I was terrified during that attack right there. I was like, ah, the bear's going to maul me. Oh, God. Yeah. Maybe Ursus has pre-programmed me. But, um, so do you know so, what the, um, the, the little root things do? They basically, it's just a root, basically. It entangles you yeah, for three oh, yeah. seconds, and it does like 60 physical per second. So it's more of like a preventing you from moving thing. It doesn't prevent you from attacking, I believe. You can still attack through it, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. I might be wrong there. But I'm pretty sure you can still attack. I'm, I'm very grateful for the rooted with the little timer bar above my head. I was like, yeah. okay, we're rooted right now. That's a lot, sick. All a right. lot of roots are slightly different than each other. Um, some have um, disarms, some don't. So kind of depends. I, I might be completely wrong on that. but Okay, so basically like your laning stage went fairly well. Your first purchase was kind of bad. I really didn't like the wand pickup. It's kind of, It just doesn't really do anything. Your last hits have been pretty yeah. good this game. You've got 24 here at about six minutes. It so, wasn't bad. Uh, so I have two questions. Yeah. So first of all, when you say your first purchase was bad, are you not referring to the Ring of Aquila? No, Aquila first is amazing. It's it gives you like nineteen damage. Okay. Okay. As an yeah, hero. And armor. Okay. It was the wand, and it's because we're up against a super rarely casty yeah. spell man. And and wand is literally just a, a a tool to help you survive burst ganks if people cast a lot of spells. Kind of. That's that's literally literally about it. But if they're not roaming on you. If, if this guy doesn't cast any spells, it's just better for you to... You could have bought a, a Belt of Giant Strength instead, and arguably that would have been better in some ways. So, um, okay. Or gotten... In, or even like Gloves of Haste would be good. That'd be another way to deal with the bear. The bear has tons of HP, but you do a lot of damage in the other Toxin. Just buy the Gloves of Haste first for your Helmet Dominator, and then you have 20 more attack speed, and you can just throw out poison and actually kill the bear faster. That's another okay. potential pivot that you could have done. But as a whole, okay, this, this laning stage was good. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to try to just focus on laning stage today, if that, yeah. if that wasn't clear. Yeah, well, one of the things that I wanted to ask about this is that there were many times at the start, like yeah. right when, um, right at like 30 seconds, where I was attacking him and pushing him back, and I missed a last hit or two. Okay. Um, I ideally, mean, it, it, yeah. ideally, you always get the last hit, basically. Um, there's maybe some times where it'd be okay. Um, yeah. But generally, I, like, when I used to play Viper, I'd play him sometimes. And uh, I just don't want to say all the time because I don't want people to hate me. I just got to make that clear. Um, 
but I would focus too much on denying. I would focus on denying and harassing, but I would never get myself last hits. That yeah, I felt a lot really of behind. Stint. And you gotta think about it as well from a player ability standpoint. If you think you're the best player in the game, you don't want to settle for getting his HP low and limiting the amount of experience he's getting. You want to do that while getting yourself a shitload of gold. Okay. It's really important to do that because right. the the amount of the amount of um like extra advantage you get just from having gold is huge. Ten more last hits is like four hundred gold. You know, if you do that with thirty last hits, like all of a sudden you have like an, a, a small item that your opponent doesn't have. It's a massive difference. So try not to miss those if possible. That okay, happened tight. a lot more in uh, in the other one actually. Um, so with that said, let's jump into the second one. So this is where you're playing Lena now against oh, Viper. Does this, this hurt this, you to watch? What? Does this hurt you to watch? What's the uh, not to watch, but I, I I am reliving the stress of the moment because here is here is what I literally thought going into the game. Um, when I've been Viper, I have felt great in almost all my matchups that I've yeah. played. Um, the one that I didn't feel good against was when I was up against a silencer um, in mid. I felt really helpless against the silencer. He just shadow me like all early games so when i was here in this game my expectation was that i was significantly weaker than viper and i would have to do something very very defensive i was a little um off with my last hits because i just haven't played lena in a while and i just clearly lost the feel having played only viper with his ultra fast projectile and animation and bonus damage for easy last hits don't forget that yeah, one too. yeah. oh yeah yeah so, so i mean that I was fine with because that's like a totally knowable problem, right? That's like a practice thing. Yeah. It's just the sense of how to even think about Viper. I clicked on him and I saw that he just had a shitload of regen and I went, okay, I want to try to be fast. And I, I just did the most terrible build in the moment. I was like, got two points in Fiery Soul early. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure about that. I had you muted while I was taking clips. So what was the... Thinking about it now, what, what was the reason you went down that? Just because he had more regen, so you thought, I'll beat him with movement speed? Was that the thought? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I have done where um, by level seven, I have all four points in Q and then I have one, one, one. Okay. And then I start to max the fire. And then I start to max the fiery soul after that. Okay. Um, How have you and felt about I, those games? Uh, in those games, I felt very good because I can just move so unbelievably quickly and get out of shitty situations. But these are games from like two, three months ago. Okay. So you're probably playing so, against worse players that didn't punish you correctly and. It, it, it could have been. I mean, like, the, the the guide says to max the Q and then max the W and then max the E. Yeah. Let's have a point there. Certainly the way you're supposed to do it, usually. Um, the, the issue with maxing Fiery Soul is that um, it, it scales pretty well, but you don't really have the mana to support it to keep your aura, to keep your passive always up. Um, so it's, and especially in the laning stage. Oh, that I mean, makes sense. Yeah. What, what you basically needed to focus on was having a trade advantage. He has more region than you. That's absolutely true. But you're a ranged hero number one. So every time he hits you, you can hit him. And you have really strong nukes. So hypothetically, you can use your abilities to gain an advantage over him. Um, because all he can do is auto attack you. That's it. And yeah, he's going to have an advantage if he's trading auto attacking, uh, if he's trading auto attacks with you with those. But with nukes on top of that, everything changes. If you land a stun, for example, he can't auto attack you for 1.6 seconds. Man, so I mean, in a sense, I should just be going for last hits and trying to chip him a little bit with just harass cues, and then if he tries to go on me, I could just Q W right click him or harass right clicks. Like Viper hitting Viper right now, he he actually has very low armor at level one. Look, he's got two armor down there. So if you right click him and he doesn't have his third skill, corrosive skin, which you should be able to figure out pretty fast. Almost no Vipers will get that skill level one. If he doesn't have that, that means every time that you right-click him, if he doesn't right-click you back, you've had a trade advantage. So you just need to f keep focusing on those moments where you will have a trade advantage while also doing the other last hitting tricks. And if you do that much better than him, which you easily can do against 2k players, he's going to run out of his regen really fast. And then you can start abusing things like the fact that you have AoE, you can push the lane, stuff like that. Yeah. So would it be fair to say that because I see that he has a lot of regen... Lena, I think, definitely has longer range than Viper. I think it's 600 and 675 or something. Yeah, and he's like 525, I believe. And she's 670, okay. I think. So yeah, she has longer range. And she has nukes. So you can play games. You can like f pretend like you're about to throw a last hit and then you nuke him and then right-click him like twice. There's a lot of little like things like that that you can do to try to abuse him. And your creep lock was really good. Like The, the creeps fighting here is, is amazing just because now he basically can't even contest you, you right-clicking. But... One thing I'd really recommend is using your nuke to get the range creep. I think you made a mistake on that. And then you lose 
you yeah. know, uh, a lot of the uh, one fifth of the experience in the creep wave. So that's pretty huge. So um, in terms of the general leaning, um, it was okay. Like right there, you could have right clicked him. He's still level one, probably. Like that. That was yeah. two times you guys were like about to make out, and you're like, oh no, I'm oh, not ready. Oh my god. Oh ready. no. It's just we 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 were this close on the spaghetti string, and it breaks at the end. I'm like, that's fine. I like spaghetti. It's no big deal. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's really important you get those hits in. I know your hero attacks stupidly slow, but if you had just attacked him like six times up until now, he would be significantly lower in HP, and he would be way less willing to actually try to even harass you. So like while you think playing defensive here is important, it's more important to get his HP low enough so that he just doesn't even feel comfortable trying. And you have I to definitely be will want to play Lena again in the Kochi game. Okay, that would, I think that's a good idea. Um, I think getting fiery soul here is potentially potentially okay, just because um, you could you could use it to abuse and trade. So you were thinking about getting the skill because it makes you faster, but the part that you should have thought about was the attack speed difference. Because now, yeah. if you buff up your attack speed by forty percent every time you cast a spell, now you're easily offsetting his attack speed slow and right clicking him faster. Okay, so. What was I going to ask? I had a question in mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So with his regen, with him having all the regen items, I think the wrong thing for me to do, which I think I might wind up doing, is getting a little over eager and trying to nuke him down too early. Really, I should be trying to right click to burn through his regen to yes. set up more plays with the nukes. Wow, and if he goes on me, yeah. And if he goes on me, I have these nukes as a way to out trade him if he tries to yes. go ham or to threaten then he dies i mean it, especially if you have a stun and a level two dragon slave that's a ton uh, if, he, if he tries to go high ground on you and there's creeps nearby it can completely turn things around or make him get Got into it. a situation they thought he was going to be fine in but actually doesn't happen um you had a couple times where you'd miss dragon slaves um <laughs> I, you'd still harass him with it but pretty oh, much perfect. almost all of the harass that he's taken so far has been you casting dragon slave a couple times about twice yeah. with like three right clicks but I, I guarantee you could have kept his hp a lot lower based on the fact that you had a really good block to set things up so yeah i th i think that i have a mental block against right clicking in lane upon understanding how creep aggro works i just i just rarely ever do it well the the range is so low um actually so here's here's the melee creeps um, yeah. The range that you that that it aggro's is like something like this. It's not very far. It's 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 huh. like three hundred units or something like that. So as long as you're back here, it's no big deal at all. And even if you do really? sometimes just run away from the creeps, and they'll get bored. They'll be like, oh, he's not attacking our friend anymore. This these guys are fighting. Let's go help out. Like you can just distract them for a set for a second. That's basically what happens every time you aggro. Anyways, you right click the hero. They run at you. You keep running, and then they're like, screw this, yeah. and they fight some other creep. Yeah, you know, I realize that I, I pretty much have learned every one of these aggro pulling, manipulating tricks mm -hmm. um, with Viper, where I've never, ever even had to deal with the question of what yeah. their aggro range is. So I have just, zero feel for it. So it exactly. felt infinite to me. Yeah, just because of poison attack, because it makes it so abusive. Um, this is a huge mistake that you made here. Um, if you look at the creep equilibrium, um, I, I could see it in your movements. You felt completely unsafe approaching the creep wave because. The yep. creep waves on the high ground and vipers up here. Hundred percent, exactly. And then you said, that. "I want this last hit." And then what you did is you reset the wave, and now both <laughs> creeps are dead. And here come the next set of creeps. Da, 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 da. And it's now a we're even safer. again. We did it. But, <laughs> and you got one last hit, but he got like two denies. You could have just been. You were patient, but then you became unpatient, impatient, and all of a sudden you ruined everything. Because if you just sat there and let him auto attack that creep wave, those four creeps would have just walked towards your side, and then the creep wave would have probably met about here. Somewhere like this. And then, yeah. again, he has to attack uphill against you, which is going to miss sometimes. Trade advantage. And then you can try to do right clicks or, or nukes or something else. So, like, you, you basically didn't allow yourself to abuse the, the creep equilibrium here to gain an advantage against the Viper. And I, I would have considered grabbing the Arcane Rune as well, because then you could have spammed Dragon Slaves on him to try to um, burn through his regen as well. Might yeah, good. Um, my, my intuition and timing on bottling in mid is really really off because of the you know two places at once i actually don't know how to think about my bottle early game as a result mm -hmm. yeah i could definitely tell that because i felt like you didn't really ever use your bottle to get something done in some ways like it would you'd use it to give yourself regen and use it in times where you needed health but you weren't playing the lane around being able to do that like this this moment for example yeah. here you're about to get this last hit viper's coming back to the lane and you threw a nuke did you really need to throw a nuke, though? I don't feel you did, because you could have gone that last hit. He was just coming back to lane. 
Um, yeah. And then now you guaranteed that he, he gets the deny over here. That was obviously a mistake by you. But even still, you kind of push the lane again. But there's not really a purpose. We're, we're at 230. Runes spawn every two, at every even minute at two minutes. Yeah. At two minutes. So this is the time that you want to push a lane. If you want to go refill your bottle, you do this before the two minute mark, assuming your bottle's before that. And you'd have to just like push the lane really fast, then go do it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm at like 145 where they're yeah. meeting, Prep I'm just going to, yeah. Uh, okay. At that point, you get ready. Here's another really impactful thing of the lane stage. You nuked him here, but you didn't take corrosive skin debuffs. So you know that he doesn't have his third skill, which increases magic resistance and burn, burn damage every time you attack him. Occasionally, you could check. I know this because I'm an observer here, but you should have been able to figure that out as well. Because then you could have, again, used oh, it gosh. to try to trade. No, I could not have figured that. It would have literally never occurred to me. If I played another 2,000 hours of this game, I would never have thought to look at my thing. I mean, you play Viper like 60% of the time, I'm, I'm sure. Come on, man, you can get it. You know the hero in and out. You just literally attack people and they die. No, that's the thing, is that like it never occurs to me to look at my hot bar to see the corrosive okay. skin. I see. That's what's crazy. I just it never it never occurred to me like when I have, you know, wiggly, like unhappy shield above my head from Slardar. I totally like hover and I'm like, how long does this thing last? What exactly does it do? But like, holy shit, the corrosive skin thing never even occurred to me, man. That's so sick. Sir. So you remember again when I was Viper and you, and you were Ember and we were trading at level one? And I basically yeah. said if I was level two. I basically kind of made a mistake. I got first blood, but I should have waited to get some lane advantage, then trade, because then I would have had two skill points, and it would have been way stronger. So, like, level one Viper is actually not that strong, believe it or not. Like, poison attack only does so much damage. I'm going to look at the time slot, 314. Let's go back to this. Poison attack. It does 10 damage per second for two seconds. And it slows a little. That's it. And he has two armor at level one. And he doesn't have Nether Toxin, and he doesn't have Corrosive Skin. That's when you mess up Viper, is level 1. If you have a ranged, if you're equivalent on range, and you have a nuke. You can trade yeah. even with this guy. You gotta get some Viper players in here, man. And yeah, we're, we're 4 minutes in, but you could have still you could have still traded with him, because he didn't have Corrosive Skin. It was definitely an option. But you didn't really abuse that. You, you, you didn't, you didn't uh, trade effectively, you didn't um, abuse his items really. Um, like, looking at his items is not like the end all be all. Oh, he's got a lot of regen. I shouldn't even bother hitting. You should still play around his mistakes and the way that he plays the game. Because that's what's going to produce the best results from the laning stage. Like, yeah, I think, play, play I around think, him being bad, not about his items. Maybe yeah, both. I think the biggest thing is just me not understanding using right-click as a tool. Yeah. Like, de it like was almost completely off my radar because it, for me i was like okay well i can't really put in a right click here because i'm so fragile you can just come kill me but it's like well, it doesn't really do that much damage and yeah. the creeps don't really aggro you that far and if you just do it a few times and you think about the mischance i just mm -hmm. went into this matchup with huge fear because if i were viper i would have felt great against alina i, I mean yeah. i haven't played against alina but i've always felt so powerful as viper and so not Powerful as Lena. I, I feel like Lena can certainly handle this matchup. Um, I think you were definitely vulnerable to roaming. The ogre made it a little hard for you because he kept coming mid and trying to right click you. But I mean, we're four minutes in. There hasn't been like a close call yet. I know eventually the ogre helps get you low. Oh, except there was that one before. But um, I think oh, you, you, you were here. almost very, very stabilized. Do you know what the mistake was? I went on low ground. Uh. No, that's not not the problem. The mistake was already made here. It was oh, the, the fact, fact that, that I once you saw the ogre, you ran back to mid lane. Which means the only constraints of your running are going down and then cutting back. Whereas if you just ran to the left of him instead, while he nuked you, he would have attacked you and probably gotten your HP to like here. But at least then the only way Viper gets you is to run across and then catch up. Which he probably wouldn't have been able to do. So your mistake was right here. That movement. That and way. then once you were here, you were like, I'm screwed. Yeah. <laughs> because you knew. You were screwed. So it was I literally the just this. Oh no. Yeah. That, that's and all it took. It with my with my clumsy one point in, or two points in yeah. my Q and my no, e. no stun <laughs> to even stop them from killing you. Yeah, it makes it harder certainly. So right click them more. Um, we'll, we'll have to get we'll have to talk about the nuke stuff a bit later. Just like pushing out lanes and, and getting runes. Um, but as a whole, like um, this game definitely could have been a lot better. The skill build messed you up. Um, the the harass well, you should have traded way more. I didn't see that guy say that he loved me. That would have made the moment all the all the worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God I yeah. wasn't looking at chat. Oh, what a relief. Yeah, certainly. Oh yeah, something I wanted to mention in the previous game, really quick, that I wanted to look at. If we jump forward a little bit in this Viper game, they had oh too far. 
So, um, have you ever clicked on your Aquila before? Uh, I have. I know that it turns off the armor aura, which Correct. means that I won't push as hard. Yep. So that's something I, I should have mentioned earlier today. Is that if you do want to push, keeping that on is important because it gives yeah, your creeps I, to armor. Like literally, my thought with Ring of Aquila is I am trying to think about other things in lane, and I'll just learn this skill later. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Honestly, you, you can. Just... If you're in the mid lane, just leave it on. If you're in the safe lane, turn that thing off. Turn turn your Basilius off and turn your Aqua off because then you're pushing. In the safe lane, you want creep equilibrium, but in mid, not as important. But something really cool that I thought of here, I saw a pro player do it the other day when I was watching a pro game. But um, if we look at your first purchase, obviously Aqua is going to help you push towers easier. But if you get a Helm of the Dominator on top of that, the cool thing is that you can dominate one of their lane creeps and it will turn into a creep with 1400 HP. So not only will you be pushing faster because you have Aquila for armor on your creeps, but you can instantly get a ma like a massive tank for one of their creeps, from one of their creeps, which makes you push faster, and it can tank like a billion tower hits. Oh shit, so like, I step ahead of, like, so right now the creep wave has met, and if we were to think back like five seconds in the past, their creep wave is running up, and I just, Helm of the Dominator, like the front melee creep, and that now has 1400 health? Pretty much, yeah. Or, or if like you're about to clear up this creep, let's say you're not about to get double ganked, kill this creep wave, use Helmet Dominator on this other one. Instantly, it's fourteen hundred creep or HP, and then you can just hopefully have that be in the front. It can tank the tower, which means that all your creeps stay alive longer. It's a really good so way to push towers. Sick. So, so hypothetically, if you really did want to push fast with Viper, now your solution could be Brown Boots, Aquila, Helm of the Dominator. Skip Wand, skip Treads, just get that ASAP. And then you have decent survivability, and you can push like crazy just because of the ability to take control of a creep every 60 seconds and tank the wave without even having to leave lane. Fast question. So. If I do something where I skip my treads, first of all, just to reiterate, I would be skipping treads because I am doing really well in lane, and I'm looking for a, a stronger spike. Yeah, a, a spike that could give you an advantage for like two or three minutes until you then finish your treads again, and then you're still strong. Yeah, Yeah, and... and would I ever want to not finish my treads and just wait for boots of travel? Uh, generally, feel no. Like I would. It, it really depends on the hero. There's a couple cases, like if you're playing maybe Morphling, it can be worth it because you get so much attack speed anyways that treads is like maybe skippable. Um, yeah. Ember Spirits for a long time used to always do that build. They just get really fast boots of travel so that they could split push around the map. But there's very few heroes, with the exception of like Tinker and maybe Ember Spirit, that really get a lot better with boots of travel. Usually boots of travel is by far a waste of money. Just because, yeah, it's a free TP, and yeah, it gives you 100 movement speed, but that's 2,000 gold. Like that could be like a Helma Dominator and like an extra two to 300 gold. It's yeah. that that's way more like actually good than just something like movement speed, 50 movement speed. It's like a second boots. That's pretty much all it does for fights. So very rare cases where a uh, boots of travel rush is good. Like treads, uh, most almost all the boot upgrades are just so goddamn efficient for yeah. what it gives you. Oh, so, sorry to clarify you know, one thing. Yeah. I, I definitely wouldn't want to get Boots of Travel immediately, but I was thinking something like, would I ever want to go Brown Boots, Helma Dominator, and then get like a Hurricane Pike and all the other stuff, and then later on in the game get it's, Boots of Travel? Or does that just seem way not worth it compared to the stack gain? It's an option. Um, I'm not worried about the stack gain from Treads. I'm worried about the attack speed. Because if you're running around oh, with just a okay. Helm of the Dominator and a, a, a Hurricane Pike, your attack speed's okay, but it's not amazing. And you'll find if you try that build sometime, yeah, you're going to be way faster and you'll be able to chase people. But when you actually get into the heat of battle, you're like, I really wish I was attacking a little faster because I would have killed that guy before his stun came off cooldown again. You will certainly yeah. encounter it. And, and for a hero like Viper, whose strategy is get into fights, stay alive, kill people one by one, you need to be able to min-max your damage. And the treads is more important than having the, the, the easier upgrade to boost the travel in the mid game by far okay sick but it depends um so um and then we can just quickly review game three which was pretty much a cakewalk this is basically just you crapping on this guy and i want to uh, first i want your feedback why do you think you crapped on this guy so fast like why did, he did almost nothing in the lane right like why, why do you think you were so successful uh well i mean i just clicked on him. I saw i had low armor and low health and i just have never I didn't look at his attack damage in every single one of these. I, I never looked at attack damage, okay, that's which fine. is something I need to do more. Because when you were like, "Hey, the bear, look at the bear's damage," I was like, "Holy shit!" I never even thought of doing that. Like, so um, I know that he can send out the little pulse thing, yep. which hurts a little bit, heals a little bit, so that's AOE ish. Yep. 
or it, not yeah, uh, it, alias is, is the wrong uh, phrase I'm looking for. It's like he can distribute a lot of damage over small things, but he can't do a lot of single point damage. That's correct. He doesn't seem to have a lot of armor and a lot of health. And then I looked at his item set and he has some regen and some damage. And I can just slow him and just kill him because he, he's not fast enough. So would you say that your advantage was based on his itemization and just like the nature of the hero at level one? Um, yeah, he just looked weak and I just did not feel any threats. I don't quite know the names of the abilities, but I know there's one where he like becomes a ghost and there's one where he like does the weak thing. I just didn't think yeah. that he had virtually any damage or any way to hurt me. Well, the reason that he had no damage was because he never attacked you. So if you just watch this clip here, this whole time you're harassing him, he has attacked you exactly zero times. You see that? Huh. You just attacked him like six or seven times and he didn't respond. So do you remember so that's, my point that's before? Like the, yeah, the Lena Viper game. Like, if I had attacked six times at all those moments, maybe I not, may have been in the same position. Maybe not quite this extreme because uh, Necro's <laughs> our, our HP is yeah. a little bit lower. But the um, the point is, if uh, right clicking is the strongest thing, and if you don't correctly trade, then this is the situation you get in. And a lot of trading is about trying to push your opponents to make mistakes. And at two point three k MMR or whatever you're around now. People are going to do stuff like this and not understand why. It's just like if you were playing Lena and that Viper had actually gone aggressive on you, I feel like you wouldn't even hit him. You just would have done the same thing. I'm scared of Viper and you would have ran away. But instead, the important thing to do is trade hits. And because this guy didn't even right-click you back, he just let you auto-attack him for free six times. And all of a sudden, he's missing half his HP and he's basically lost the lane. That's why so, this guy lost. He just didn't so right-click you. If he had right-clicked me, would this have been a completely different story? Because, I mean, Absolutely. I literally felt like there was no way he could deal that much damage to me, and he seemed weak, so let me just walk up to him. You also had Drow Aura again. <laughs> so you had an yeah! extra six there. But, yeah, him not right-clicking you was massive. Because he actually he doesn't hit as hard as you, but it's pretty comparable. He actually has more armor than you. But he's only hitting, like, seven less... Uh, it's actually five less damage than you were hitting four. He has one more armor than you. He is 10 movement speed faster, and he has a new keel out of his first skill. If he was just right-clicking you that whole time, it would have been completely different. Um, in some ways, I think you would have done about the same damage to each other if you just fought back and forth. And then as soon as he gets that regen disadvantage, now he's lost the regen aspect of the trifecta because getting back up to full HP means he has to slowly tangle it back up. And now because you played aggressive, which was perfect, I was really happy you did this, you sat on his side of the hill, which meant that any time he comes forward now, you can trade with him. And now he doesn't get experience anymore. And now the and, lane is basically over because you completed the trifecta. Yeah, and this is one of these moments where I was trying to be more adamant about getting my own last hits. I missed one right there, but I was trying to look less at where he was and more at like trying to kill my own creeps. You definitely, I, you, no, honestly, you're, uh, this is my spectating, so it's not quite the same, obviously, but... You did a really good job on last hitting this game. Um, we can look at some of the metrics near the five minute mark, but I mean, he's still level one right now. You're like halfway to level three, and he's coming back to fight you again. If you would have done this at the start of the game, when you're one, everything's different. But now you've got another toxin, and you don't even have your corrosive skin yet. You actually hit level three before, while he was still level one. Did you know that? Uh, no. I mean, I he was so far away, I couldn't click on him a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. But he's basically just screwed. Um, and this is just because of uh, ineffective trading. And because you, you're Viper and he didn't trade well. So th this is a moment where, um, like, I, I, I just thought to myself, okay, I'm really low. I It will take me forever to regen with my Z. And I'm winning this right now. So if I want to really punish him, I'm going to need a lot of mana. So I just went back to the Sanctuary. I, I was fairly okay with that because of the fact that you had been using so many poison attacks on this guy. Um, I was all right. Uh, yeah. I, I hope I don't remember the exact moment you went to do it. I believe you stayed at this. You cleared this creep wave first. Yeah. Maybe I'm mistaken, but um, this is also maybe a mistake in your. Did you notice this gank at all by any chance? Uh, what, what, as what, I was going up, I heard Chen say something, and okay. then I was like, Burp. "No, it was it was fine." I, I would say maybe one mistake with your skill build or item build actually is that. Because you don't have an Ironwood branch, you can't just plant a tree wherever you're sitting. And I feel like that's a huge loss for Viper because you are so trade-focused that if you get a trade advantage, the lane is over. So, and, But the problem is you don't have the time to run back all the way back to your side of the river to eat a tree. If you had an Ironwood branch, plant that thing, boom, you just, you've just you got regen for 230. So if, I am, if I'm feeling like I'll be able to be a little more aggressive and on his side, 
like I'm starting to win, just put an Ironwood branch on the order tab, bring it right on over, and no. just plant and pick up. But, you got, I mean, you, you got to have it as you get to the lane. I don't think you can afford an, uh, a wraith band and a tango, but it might be worthwhile to yeah. do something like buy the wand components without the magic stick, which is circle it, double Ironwood branch, or even triple Ironwood branch with a tango. And then that would give you like plus six to all stats, which is not as good as a Wraith Band damage wise because Wraith Band gives nine, but it gives you more strength and it gives you more int. That's an option. It would heavily delay your Aquila's one downside, yeah. but it would mean that at level one, when you're trading with this guy, you don't have to worry about sitting at that like 400 HP mark that you were just at because that may makes you vulnerable to ganking and vulnerable to him potentially killing you and changing everything. Yeah. Here he is. Oh, I'm sorry, he got three now, but. So um, possibly changing your item build at level one might be a good idea based on if you have a matchup like this where you're playing really aggressive. Uh, but yeah. that's just a potential optimization thing that you could change. At yeah, this I point, you, you know what to do. Yeah, I'm probably going to... Because at this point, when he stepped forward, I just knew he was dead. Yeah. I don't even think I needed to do that last Q. Yeah. Like, and then, and then there was the attack that he did after that that I was a little confused by. Yeah, man, you tilted him. The guy was like level one. He, he basically, like, how often are you in that situation where you can't even get close to the creep wave? It doesn't happen very often. And then you're like, what, what can I get farm anywhere? Is that even possible? I don't know Actually, what to do. The, the reason that I switched to Viper is I was Zeus mid, and I was playing against a Viper yeah. who just shat all over me. And yep. I was like, oh, yeah, Viper. All right. Yeah, I remember him. And that's what made me start playing him again. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. And yet, this is basically him not understanding how Viper works. Not to mention that he's behind. He, he's he's trading at the wrong time. There's times to be conservative and there's times to be aggressive. And basically, the, the game is completely over at this point. Um, at least in terms of how the laning stage went. So let me just show yeah. your last hits around five minutes here. I'll just have to jump forward a bit if this would stay popped up. And right about here. All right, here we are. Five minutes and 13 seconds in the game. And you have 28 last hits. Which means you are definitely on pace to get like 60 about at 10 minutes. Which is what huge. are what are like okay good great you should bad, be aiming for good. at least 50 at 10 minutes 50 at, at 10 least minutes. and if we go to game one and we drop jump to your 10 minute mark let's see oops see what you had so here we at nine minutes and we'll jump forward so this one was a little bit you were contested a bit you did pretty okay this one you hit about 50 yeah 50 at 10 minutes Oh, but, come on, and, come on, hit it. Oh, no, 49, I need, oh, I need just one more. I need one more to be all right. Just, oh, for uh, God's sake. Just, oh, oh, it might take, it. oh, God, it's going to take like a minute. Okay, there we go. A minute later, you got one. 50 last hits. Good job. Oh, for God's sake, at but, least he But dies. in this other clip, you had way more last hits. And obviously, and you had multiple kills. Like 28 last hits at, at five minutes is fantastic. If you can hit 60 at 10, you're doing great. And let's see how many last hits he has right here. A big old yeah, four. four. <laughs> like... This guy got crapped on, um, and you, and now he's basically useless for the next like ten minutes unless his team gets a good team fight going and he can catch up, or he gets a gank, couple ganks off. But yeah, you you wreck this guy's day, and I really have seen I've seen a lot of improvement in your mid lane from um, in this game especially. Your last hitting's effective. You were willing to trade. You were willing to be aggressive on his high ground. It was great. Big improvement there. A oh, fucking just, learner, man. Just got to fix your Lena now. Is yeah, God, doing? holy shit. Can you go to ten minutes? How? What was I doing in ten minutes? In I actually game? don't have. I don't have ten minutes. At this point, I was like, "This game's over." So <laughs> that was real clear to me. When you when you win mid game this bad, it's it's pretty obvious. We could pull we could pull up like a Dota buff or something to check your ten minutes. Actually, I got... oh, I'm I'm just literally opening the game. I mean, okay, yeah. I got no shame now. I'm just gonna rewatch the first the first start of that thing. Let's see how this one goes. All right, let's scroll this to plus sixteen speed. But well, yeah, I mean, like, you did great. It was good. This was a good game for you. Yeah, I think I was perceiving myself as missing more last hits than I thought. No, you did You did really well. You missed a couple, but that's all right. You can definitely miss a few. It's not that big of a loss. And so when you have two good players, like really good players, pressing and trading against each other, yep. is it that the overall last hit count goes down, or, or do they both just get an insane number? Um, uh, mid last hits are usually lower than a carry last hits because they are contesting each other a little. But they still get, they both still get pretty good last hits because they don't make a lot of mistakes like nuking the creep wave and then they're all below fifty percent and letting their <laughs> opponents last hit. Like yeah. they still get pretty good last hits, um, and uh, in a lot of cases they'll they'll do things like. Oh Jesus, Despy! What the fuck? My cat just freaked out. What's what's going on? 
Holy shit, that scared the shit out of me, man. I don't remember anything that you were saying to me. My cat That's just fine. like was sleeping and then just buckled awake. Holy cow. Cat mares. What were we talking about? Uh, talking about um, how many last hits a pro player gets while they're trading heavily. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. There's a trick that you can do that would help this a bit. So, for example, um, this creep here that you, you nuke to try to get the last hit. Um, the, yeah. the, the trick you can do is when you and your opponent are about to fight over a last hit, over who gets it. Um, let's, say, let's say like two creeps are dying at the same time. Your creep and their creep. And yeah. you're trying to decide, yeah. do I want to deny or do I want the last hit? Usually people will go for the last hit, is what they want. They want a last hit for themselves because gold is better than denying their opponent. So what you should yeah. do is fight for their last hit, deny it, and then instantly use your nuke to last hit yours. Because you can't attack twice two different targets. But right. if you attack to deny theirs and nuke yours, you get both. So there's tricks like that that you can do in the mid lane to try to offset that trading thing um, and always get more last hits and denies than your opponents. So I think that's pretty much it for the laning stage. Like, uh, I know there's this. I know this game was ultra crazy and all, um, but we are not ready to cover team fight decision making and stuff. Yeah, this, yeah, like, you know, I the laning stage I've, is so important. You, I even talked about this at the end of the game where I was like, okay, because I feel like I was so clueless in the first twenty minutes. I feel like analyzing like the last thirty is so meaningless. Like, yeah. why would I? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, what happens if I accidentally kill four of my own SCVs and get supply blocked and then build too many barracks and then, and now we're in a 45 minute game. I'm like, you shouldn't be here. I don't know what to do. You should never be in this position. So, yeah. And if your Lena game had just gone like your third Viper game did, then it would have been a 20 minute game. It's that straightforward. And um, an another important thing to remember too is everybody's skills in Dota are very different. So in game three, yeah. that ogre was doing a really, uh, game two, the ogre was doing a pretty good job roaming on you. It made your game pretty hard. But as you got into the late late game, maybe he's not very good at late game stuff. Maybe he's just really good at roaming and zoning like mid heroes. Yeah. So it's like even if certain stages of the game are difficult, so even if your laning stage goes really poorly, the reason these guys are at the MMR they are is because they're really bad at other stuff that you're probably okay at. So uh, basically, never give up, never surrender. Don't like never. Don't like surrender option is stupid. There's no reason to surrender. You don't need to. You can always win the game if you play the right way. Um, like this late game, if you had just hexed before they use BKB and kill a crucial hero at a, at a perfect time, everything changes. But you have to be able to do those things to close the game out. So, yeah. You wanna, Sick. You want to play a leaning game now? Yeah, yes I do. Well, I invited you to a party. I need okay. you to get set as a coach. And I think that the one downside to this is that it would it will be a pub match. So I'm currently, like, hit the find Dota button. Uh -huh. Um by the way, do you want to do a break segment, like so that way you can snip it easily, Ooh, yeah. or do you just like cut yeah, it? Yeah, that sounds good. Let's uh, that's what I'm gonna put this as waiting screen for like eight seconds, and it's not gonna do, matter. Do it, do it as thirty. Do it as thirty because I'm, I'm gonna get some water. Okay, okay, hold on. All right, we'll be back in a bit, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm not here anymore. Okay, and we're back to talk about Dota until we find a match. Hey guys. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for watching my advertisements. Yeah. Okay. So, like, you're watching on Purge channel. If you're from my, if you're from my neck of the woods, watching, I'm hosted Purge. I encourage you to come to Purge's channel to like, to subscribe, to shower Purge with money and praise. At the very least, praise is the least you can do okay. about his looks, his wit, mm. his choice in fashion. Basically, uh, I mean, the same jumper every single day and uh, a different kind of retro. Oh, I'm actually wearing a Dodo shirt. Do you want to see? Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> I yeah, that's... I, don't, I don't know if it'd be too pandering to just wear the shirt on stream. Just be no, like, you, you bright just red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is fine. I'm on my channel now. You don't have to, you can't say shit. That's it's right. Just gonna no. be Dota Wolf shirts from here on out, guys. Besides, I'm Ain't no. Did, uh, did I tell you I got got into a uh, into a fight with the dog today? Into a fight like. Did the dog like the dog rear was... up and begin to punch? Like, how did how did the fight work? Um, it was a, uh, it was a uh, this this dog that was unleashed, and my dog is bad at meeting other dogs. So then the dog came over to say hi to my dog, and my dog probably said something really awkward like "You smell weird," and then the other dog got really mad and just started fighting my dog, and I had to punch it. So wait, wait, you punched a I punched dog? punched a dog today, yeah. You, like, it didn't work very much, very well, did though. Did you pull your dog away, and then your fist replaced your uh, dog? Eventually, I 
pulled the other dog away. That worked the best to get them to stop fighting. Oh my god! It oh was, my god! Kevin, dog puncher. It was goading, kind of man. scary. Yeah, but she's she's fine. Jesus. Yeah. No. I that I I'm I'm annoyed at the other dog's owner because yeah. like if your dog's on a leash. Yeah. You, you're totally in control. And if your dog's off a leash, your dog better be really well trained. Yeah. And he was like biking around. And uh, uh, my mistake was like letting her like look over at the dog instead of like instantly seeing it that it wasn't on a leash and ditching. Um, because the dog came over to say hi, basically. And there's this gate. But naturally, like there's this runoff where the, the dog crawls under. And then it's like Ugh. the other dog with my dog. And this guy's just like biking away. And he's like, come on, doggy. And then he, like, turns the corner. He's just gone. He's basically gone. And here's this, like, oh my God. German shepherd male or, like, and I'm a just German here with this dog. A shepherd that attacked your dog? Uh, you know, they got mad at each other or something. Um, but yeah, Dude, no, that's, that, like, you shouldn't say, you you yeah. should take no responsibility for this, man. That's on the other dog. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, dangerous certainly, to have certainly a dog is. like yeah, that, yeah. man. Yeah, who knows? I'm like, glad you punched a dog. I hope you punched a dog again. <laughs> I could have died, honestly. Like, if that if the dog had no interest in me at all, even when I punched it, um... Holy shit, but, that's uh, alarming. Yeah. Oh I, my I could've, god. I could have died today. I was pretty my and then, when cat... he, then when he came over, I was I was I felt bad because I was like, uh, she's not trained to like meeting other dogs yet. And he was just like, Oh hey, what kind of dog you got? And I'm like, Did this guy not hear the barking for like fifteen seconds? And he was just like, Come shit. on, doggy. Like, not very responsible guy, that's for sure. Was wait, what Oh god. my god. That was like Dota has been found way louder than normal. I don't know why, but it really was. That's that's the best brood war glitch of all time, man. It was, a, the, it was uh, a huge dog, I must say. Yeah, dude. In brood war, it was that. Um, uh, choose your hero. Oh yeah, Lena mid. 